Hello! In this video, I'm going to talk about some often overlooked camera accessories, specifically kick-ass holsters, because let's face it, cameras and lenses and all that stuff are big and fun and awesome to talk about, but really anything that actually makes it easier for you so you get out and shoot more often is definitely worth looking at. When I'm out collecting images, I go on a lot of long hikes with a big camera and the default strap that comes with it is hardly an ideal way to carry your gear. It's a lot of weight to dangle around your neck. Straps also present a bit of a security threat. Uh, generally, cheap cameras will have just the manufacturer listed on the strap, where expensive cameras will list the specific model by name. Why advertise that you have several thousand dollars dangle, dangling around your neck? Um, uh, let's make it a little more discreet. Straps also make it really difficult to fit your camera inside a Pelican case. Like, seriously, how am I supposed to close the lid on this thing? The problem with accessories and er ergonomic stuff is that you can't just read online reviews and trust it'll work. You really have to, you know, play with it yourself and make sure it actually works for your body and your, your workflow and your range of motions. And the only way to do that is to test it out in person. I went to the exposure photography show on the weekend and I saw a lot of really cool stuff and I actually got to try out the holster in person. And it's awesome. The spider holster is a stick with a big ball on the end of it that you insert into a V. It's also the only non-underwear product I've ever bought to feature a picture of a man's crotch on the front of the box. The system is simple enough. The stick goes onto the bottom of your camera and the V goes onto your belt and when you're not shooting the camera clicks in nice and securely and that's it. There's only one little problem with this system. The base plate. It works on every camera on the market. Every camera but one. Can you guess which camera doesn't work with the base plate? Since I'm the one making this video, um, my camera should be a good guess. Yep, that's right. The Dust Collector 600 with its gargantuan bottom doesn't fit onto the plate. Now, the company rep uh, mentioned that he can con that I can contact Spider. They'll send me a custom-made base plate specifically for the D600. That sounded good, but it really got in the way of me having it right now. Uh, so I decided to do what any self-respecting maker would do and take a brand new product and put a grinder to it and modify it to fit my needs. If you're wondering what kind of tools I need to do something like this, well, not much. The base plate is cast aluminum, and aluminum is pretty soft, so... Um, a Dremel, some files, a vise, pencil, alcohol, some wood scraps, that, that should be about it. Put the base plate on your camera and use the pencil to trace out little patches where you know for sure it's not going to fit. So you'll know what to grind down. Next, drink the alcohol. Next, pick up some power tools and start grinding. Slip and make a mess of your brand new base plate. Put down the power tools and reach for the much safer hand tools. Put the base plate into the vise using the wood scraps to avoid putting any more scratches into its surface. File away the unaided material from the base plate. Put it on your camera, realize you need to take more away, file away the unneeded material. Put the base plate on your camera, realize you need to take more away. Realize that you need to take more material away, file away the material. Put the base plate on your camera, realize you need to take more away, Finally done, it might look like a mess, but it should fit perfectly, and all that ground away crap doesn't matter because it's going to be hidden by the camera body. You're never going to see it. So, mission accomplished. My neck is saved. Yeah. Now I've just got a camera dangling by my waist and I have to be careful whenever I sit down.